while uh, ssl certificate has a public key which allows for one way encrypted data to be sent the actual communication uses two way encrypted data from both server to client and client to server how does that happen well that's an interesting question and that is something that we are going to see in today's video hey guys my name is vineet welcome to today's video on ssl handshake and today we are going to see how does an ssl handshake occur uh, asymmetric key that is the public and private key how these are processed to generate symmetric keys uh, symmetries are like the same both at client and the server side how they are being processed to generate those and how does a two way encrypted communication happen even though uh, the ssl certificate has only one pair of public private key so few of you guys have pointed out to me that the video on mtls that i have created last time that would have been more useful if like some sort of a visual aid is there so in this video i shall be using a sort of a whiteboard or a blackboard whatever you call it but please bear with me for my very 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 bad handwriting so without wasting any further time let's quickly dive in now one thing i wanted to make very clear what's the difference between the ssl and the tls i have said it previously as well ssl and tls they are used interchangeably but in the context they refer to the same thing which is your tls ssl was supposed to be used in the past i don't think like any of the current systems are using uh, ssl protocol tls is something that is currently being used uh, there are different problems issues uh, found with different version tls 1.3 is the latest one which is like used most prominently in the current times the next thing i would like to make clear is like there are a lot of different variations around uh, the ssl handshake based on the protocol the cipher how you're communicating client and uh, server negotiate these we shall be discussing around rsa key exchange we shall try to be as simple as possible uh, but the idea being if you understand like how does this happen you would be able to understand you would be able to make it out any other protocols as well so they are like uh, sort of extension to this uh, some steps moved out up down something like that but more or less the process flow remains same so first of all let's have a quick view of like what a ssl certificate is so if you go open any site click on the lot and from this point you can view the ssl certificate now there are a lot of different properties attributes that are attached to a server uh, the most important ones are the issued by like who's the issuer of the certificates what are its validity parameter when did it start when did it ends that's the other thing and uh, the other thing is the public key now subject is also a very important part which is used in validating the site that we are visiting so subject should match the domain name the host name that we are viewing uh, but the most important thing uh, that is used is the public key so if you go over here you can see it has the public key that is uh, just showed up over here so that is your certificate now how does uh, this certificate is used to like create the symmetric keys for the communication let's move into that so like any other communication uh, this ssl handshake also begins with a hello and what happens is like client initiate this communication with a hello message it sends out a few different data items with it so it sends out like what are the different tls version client supports uh, they are used in negotiation with the server uh, then it also sends out the cipher versions now cipher are the algorithm in very simplest terms uh, that are used to uh, like uh, how to generate these keys how to process the authentication the handshake and then the most important thing is the client random so client random uh, just think of it as an arbitrary data uh, just some random data that is sent by the client now once the server sees uh, this data it sees like whether the server has these versions or these ciphers that are supported uh, whether the server also supports those or not so if the server supports the best one the latest one uh, in terms of uh, 1.3 or 1.2 that is being selected along with the selected cipher uh, server selects that in case not the server sends a failure message but let's say the server has a cipher version and a protocol version that it supports it is signed by the client so what the server does server again sends a hello message to back to the client now this has uh, the tls protocol that is being selected uh, which version it is it also sends it also sends out the cipher that the server chooses along with that it also sends the ssl certificate uh, that the server is claiming and 
it sends the server random. So we have two randoms now. One is the client random sent by the client to server. We have a server random that is sent by the server to the client. So two randoms have already come into place. Now the SSL certificate that we have just seen, uh, it has a lot of different properties. The most important one uh, that is used in authentication is the SAN or the subject alternative name that is currently being used. So once the client receives the SSL certificates, okay, protocol and cipher are used like what's the best one to use. After that, it the client needs to validate this SSL certificate, whether the certificate is valid or not. Uh, it basically on a very high level does a few steps. One is like whether the site that the client is connecting and the alternative name the subject name that is in the certificate whether they are same or not that is part one after that whether the signer uh, like from where the certificate is being issued there's a trust chain that is being followed uh, it goes across different trust and see like whether the certificate is valid or not it does that uh, it is not expired uh, the dates and it has not been revoked so there are different checks that are being uh, done by the client now if you want to go into more details like how does this happen please do let me know in the comments and i shall try to come up something around that so once the validation has happened uh, what the client does it again generates a set of random or arbitrary data this is called a pre-master key so once this pre-master key is generated uh, the client basically encrypts uh, this data the arbitrary random data using the public key that was presented in the SSL certificate. So the client already has the SSL certificate. It uses the public key to encrypt that data. Now, once this encryption has happened, this key can only be decrypted by the private key, which is only available at the server. And once this is encrypted, as you already might have guessed, basically it is sent to the server, uh, this encrypted data. And uh, at this point, the server basically decrypts and get the pre-master key. So the client and server both have these pre-master key in a raw form, in a decrypted form. Now, once the client and server both have these set of pre-master key, at this point, like what happens, uh, the client and server, they both try to generate a master key out of this uh, pre-master key. How it is generated? Oh, well, uh, we already have a client random, we already have a server random, and we have a pre-master key. So based on the cipher, uh, like, like what we are using, uh, all these three keys are processed to generate a master key separately on the client on the server. So based on the cipher, both the client and the server, they derive at the same time at the same key on that. Now, once that is done, uh, they both have uh, received this master key. Now, what happens? These session keys are generated. They are derived from the master key. So what are session keys? Well, session keys are the actual keys that are used for communication. So if we move, so there are different types of session keys and there can be multiple session keys that we generated from the master key. Now, what are session keys? Uh, well, based on the master key, there are multiple keys that are generated. There are write keys and there are match keys. Match is the message authentication code. It's light of a signature or a hash that is put on the top of uh, the message. Uh, which basically proves that the message has not been tampered. So client write key is used to encrypt all the data that is sent by the client to server and likewise the server encrypt key is used to encrypt all the data that is being sent from server to the client and likewise client write match key and server write match key are used to like put out that hash uh, at the end of the message that proves the integrity of the message. Now, uh, there are IV keys as well, uh, which are not used in a RSA based authentication uh, in normal uh, ways, uh, but based on the cipher in some of the cipher DH or other high ciphers, they can be used as well. So let's jump back to our authentication flow and see like what happens next. So we have these uh, session keys generated as well. Now what will happen is like we have the master keys, we have the session keys and at that point of time, uh, we send a actual message encrypted with the session keys and uh, the client sends that message first it's called a client finished message and the client finished message is encrypted using the session key which server receives server processes it 
if all goes fine and server is able to decrypt that message uh, that means the keys are valid and working fine at that point of time server also sends back another message uh, called a server message uh, server finished in the response this is also encrypted using the session keys so the client receives this message in response uh, this is also encrypted using the session keys which client tries to decrypt it if the client is able to decrypt the message successfully then it completes our handshake now one very important point is like uh, what is the validity of the session keys well session keys can be valid indefinitely or till the session continues so at any point of time uh, the handshake can be renegotiated it can be reinitiated by the client uh, that will happen again the same process uh, that we have just seen it will again continued and the same set of keys are derived which will be used uh, down the line for all the communications within that session so that completes the SSL handshake. It's a very simplistic way. Uh, there are different variations as I've already mentioned, uh, but if you understood this like uh, this flow, how we have explained that, uh, you would be able to understand or make out any of the other flows, any of the other uh, protocols messages. So more or less they would remain same. Some variations, uh, but the idea remains uh, the same in principle. So what we've just seen is a normal TLS handshake uh, where only one of the certificates are validated and keys are generated. There's another variation of it called the MTLS uh, that we have already discussed in a previous video. Link is over here or here. So uh, what happens in MTLS, uh, both the client and the server have their own set of uh, certificates and they are like validated against each other. So they authenticate each other. So if you're not already seen that, you can check out the video. Uh, it would be available and the link is in the description as well. So guys, any questions questions, uh, queries, suggestions that are plundering your mind, do let me know in the comment section. I would be more than happy to answer that. Any feedback, uh, positive, narrative, whatever, please uh, do let me know. And if you like the video, press the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you have not done already. See you guys next time and have a very great day. Bye-bye.